Hi, and we're back with another episode of Ask Dr. Susan Live. So today we've got several really great questions that came in through the link below. If you have a question for me, you can submit it to drsusan.com slash ask. That's D-R-S-U-S-A-N slash ask. Anything about midlife wellness, hormones, sexuality, all the stuff. So today I have my first question from Mary. Hi, Mary. Hi, Mary, are you there? Yes, good afternoon, Dr. Susan. Thanks for taking my call. Oh, I'm so glad you submitted your question. So what can I do to help? Okay, um, I've been postmenopausal for 13 years, and I've read about this window of opportunity for estrogen. So now I'm in a panic because I have no estrogen. Right. <laughs> and I, I'm just wondering, are, can I take these pellets that you talked about? Yeah, so may I ask how old you are? I'm 60. I just turned 68. Six, 68 years young, so definitely not too old. And are you taking any other hormones right now? Well, estradiol. I've used the vaginal tabs for six years, and um, recently... My doctor put me on half a patch to use twice a week for, of the 2.5. Okay, so uh, just, for, just for our listeners that might not be familiar with these products, uh, those are really great products. You're taking estradiol, which is bioidentical estrogen, in a non-oral form. So those are the rules. We don't want to take it by mouth because it's bad for the liver, increases the risk of blood clot, heart disease, and stroke. But when you're using a patch and you're also using the vaginal insert, which is a great way to treat vaginal dryness, those are both good options. So how are you feeling um, with well, the treatment that you're on? They don't seem to be working. Um, I just had a saliva test recently and it shows half my estrogen's almost nil. So they did put me on a stronger patch, uh, 3.75. Yes, yeah, so, so for everybody's information, um, estradiol patches come in at several different doses. A super, super low dose is 0 0.25 milligrams, and I think you said right. you were cutting it in half. Another super, right. super low dose is the 0.375. An average starting dose would be 0 0.05. So okay. no, no wonder your, your levels were pretty low. So it raises a few questions. Um, it sounds like your providers are really trying to minimize the amount of estrogen that you're getting in your system. And my opinion is that's really not necessary. In fact, it's actually harming you because we do need to have enough estrogen to protect our bones from osteoporosis, to protect our brains from Alzheimer's. And we talk about these things all the time on this uh, show. And then also, of course, to protect the vagina and keep our sexual function optimal. So my guess would be with the dose that you're on, you're probably not getting all of those benefits. Is that, is... I know. I, and, you know, I've just been researching this. Like in the past year, I've watched 200-some videos from Dr. Taylor. Yeah. And I saw you on Dominique's uh, YouTube channel, and I got your audio book. And I'm, I'm just kind of panicked because uh, my sex life is non-existent due oh. to the symptoms, you know. Um, right. It's not lack of opportunity. It's just... <laughs> Yeah. I have no will, you know? Right. Well, of course. And sex drive is so complicated for women or our desire to have sex. So part of it's the drive that comes from our brain. I always say the biggest sex organ that we have is our brain. So testosterone is also very important and helping with sex drive, of course, as well as having a really connected relationship. But we can have our brain really into it. And if our vagina is not healthy, that's going to be a deal breaker because vaginal dryness causes pain. And naturally, yeah. as animals, we withdraw from pain because <laughs> it hurts. Yeah. So we have we really have to address both. Now, are you taking any other medications that can affect sex drive, like antidepressants or anything else of that I, nature? I have been on antidepressant for so, like 20-some years. Um, yeah. And when I, I was on a low dose of Prozac for a long time. And then when I told my gynecologist that I was... I felt like I was going crazy. Instead of upping my estrogen, she sent me to a shrink, you know, a psychologist. Yeah. 
And right. They took me out to Prozac, and I felt like a guinea pig. They tried me on every other type of antidepressant and everything. And then finally, I just went back to Prozac because I didn't really have that many ill symptoms with it. Well, you bring up a really good point because so many women in the 45 to 65 age group take antidepressants. Actually, the biggest group of people who take antidepressants are women aged 45 to 65. And that is not just because life gets more stressful and difficult, which it often does around midlife, but also because frequently depression is misdiagnosed when really it's a hormonal imbalance. Now, I'm not suggesting that you were misdiagnosed, but at least part of the symptoms are hormonal. So um, as you mentioned that you saw an interview that I did with Dominique Saxa, so many of you know her, uh, that was in December of uh, 2020. We talked a lot about uh, this issue with patients being misdiagnosed with depression when really they have a hormonal issue, because you're absolutely right. If you're on one of these, uh, what we call SSRI antidepressants, and Prozac's one of them, one of the side effects for almost all humans, men and women, is that it wipes out our sex drive or makes it impossible to have an orgasm. So you've got that on top of the vaginal dryness, no wonder you don't want to have sex. So, so absolutely, that needs to be addressed. We should have sex until the day we die, if we're able to, in my opinion. I think it's such an important part of life. So I'm totally on board with your desire to make that better. So first of all, you've got to get rid of the vaginal dryness. And you're not on enough estrogen to do that right now, based on the fact that your dryness isn't improved. So you could certainly go up on the patch. The 0.375 is still a tiny dose. Or you could switch to a pellet. Uh, So the idea that there's a time in life that it's too late to start on hormones has been proven wrong. Now, it's absolutely true that when we're younger, our hormone receptors are a little bit more available. Uh, So it might be a little bit more difficult or take a little bit more time when we're starting on hormones, you know, 10 or more years post-menopause. But we absolutely can. And what I'm hearing is you're not starting on hormones. You've been on them. We're just trying to get the dose up to an optimal level. So, Right. Uh, I mean, uh, they've been... You know, I've been on a very low dose for a long time, and it's not doing anything for me. Right, except costing money, right? So (laughs) I often, it's not not really a joke, it's actually true. If you're going to spend the money to be on hormones, you might as well be on a dose that works. Because your prescriptions are expensive, and, and you could be on this a higher dose of the same prescriptions and get much more benefit. Or you could switch to a pellet, which would be another really good option. Now, pellets are not better than the patch. They're the same okay. exact stuff. They're bioidentical estradiol. Many people, including me, just find them a little bit easier. Um, I used the patch for a while, and it, it, it works well for many people. But if you're not seeing your blood levels get up to where they need to be with the patch, go up on the dose of the patch and or okay. switch to a pellet. And then the other thing, if it were possible to work with your psychiatrist, psychologist, to maybe get on a different antidepressant that doesn't affect our sex drive, that would be really helpful. And there are some out there. Uh, For our listeners, uh, Wellbutrin, which is a brand name, Bupropion is the generic, Uh, Cymbalta is another one. Any of them that are not in the SSRI category, that's a long name for selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, that particular class is notorious for wiping out all sex drive for men and women. So if you do need something for depression, you know, depression is a terrible illness. We don't want to ignore that at all. But maybe getting on something that isn't so high on those sexual side effects would be possible. And I hear that you sounded, you felt like a guinea pig. That's an awful feeling. But sometimes we do have to try a couple of different medicines to see what will work. Um, So it sounds like in your case, we've got to get rid of this dryness, which simply involves more estrogen. Your levels are not too high, so you absolutely have plenty of room to move to increase your estrogen. If you lived somewhere where a vaginal laser was available, that's another really good option for dryness. Have you ever looked into that in your area? The only one I've seen in our area is Thermiva. Is that Mm -hmm. the same one? Yeah, Thermiva is uh, not laser, but it uses radio frequency. It's another way of generating heat to stimulate collagen and moisture in the vaginal tissue. So Thermiva does work pretty well. I did Thermiva for years in my office. I prefer laser now because it's a a little bit more effective in my opinion, but Thermiva is great. So that's another thing to consider. Okay. So it sounds like uh, maybe Thermiva, if you have that available, or vaginal laser. Um, If you are listening, uh, products like Juliet, 
Diva, Genesis, there are several out there that treat vaginal dryness, as well as increasing the estrogen, and then seeing if we can work to change to an antidepressant that isn't going to have those sexual side effects, because that is a really big problem for patients who have okay. to be treated with those. Okay. Okay, I had tried um, the Wellbutrin and uh, uh, Cymbalta, and they didn't affect, I mean, it had no effect on me, so... Um, and it, it could have been a combination of things, too, you know. Um. Yeah, I, you're right. There's so many things that affect our sexual function, aren't there? You know, it, so many yes. things. Stress, our relationship, our vaginal health, the neurotransmitters in our brains. We're way more complicated than men. So sometimes it involves just someone who can sit down and really help you walk through this and find the recipe that works for you. Now, may I ask, right. are you taking uh, testosterone or progesterone uh, as well? I did. I was using the testosterone cream, but it made me break out. Yeah. Acne. So they took me off of that totally. Because um, I'd asked if they could give me something to fight the acne, and they said, well, that's ridiculous to be on testosterone and then take something to fight the effects of it. So. Well, this will be a subject for a longer conversation, but not really, because acne is actually caused by a different hormone called dihydrotestosterone that some people make by converting testosterone into DHT. So often we will give patients testosterone and then give them a DHT blocker to help with uh, issues with their skin or hair. But that does speak to uh, something that we've talked about before, which is that testosterone creams actually can shoot your levels up very high for a brief time, and then it drops down. So we have a very undulating testosterone level, which can actually cause more side effects. So one of the reasons why I like testosterone pellets is we get a much more slow, even delivery. So ironically, with pellets, you actually see fewer side effects as far as things like acne than with the cream. So that's something um, to consider as well. And I am taking progesterone. I have all my parts Good. still. So um, Perfect. I'm taking progesterone, and that really has helped with my sleep. Yeah, doesn't it? It's the best for sleep. So just for our listeners to remember, whenever you're taking estrogen, we do need to take progesterone with it if you have a uterus because estrogen alone can increase the risk of uterine cancer. But I give progesterone to everybody regardless of whether you have a uterus because it makes you feel better, makes you sleep better. Yes. Yeah, yes. for sure. It really helps. So, well, I'm very excited to have talked to you. And I've actually been thinking about coming to Houston for a while to, to see you. If I can't find somebody in this area that's more qualified, you know. Well, we would love to have you. We have a big old airport, so come on down and visit. We'd love to have you. <laughs> I appreciate that. Well, Mary, uh, this was a really good question, and I know a lot of our listeners share the same issue, so thank you so much for being brave enough to ask it. Issues with antidepressants and sexual function, issues with vaginal dryness and sexual function, this idea that there's some age where we're beyond being able to benefit from estrogen these are just common myths that we need to get the word out and, and help people understand that you can feel better. You're way too young to have lost your sex life. I agree. We want it back. Well, thank you. Thanks so much. Well, it's my pleasure. Well, thank you for your question. And you have a great afternoon. And when you, get, when you start feeling better, please send us a message back so we can talk to you about how all that went for you. Okay, I will. Thanks so much. It's my pleasure, Mary. Have a good day. You too. Bye. So, you know, we talk about this a lot, don't we? But it's interesting how multiple patients have similar complaints, but there's always a little nuance. Some of us are on antidepressants, some of us are not, some of us are 45, some of us are 70. But as you listen to these videos, I think you'll see a lot of similarities in the questions. So most important, yes, you can take estrogen with very few exceptions, regardless of age. And trying to keep the dose too low can result in problems like continual symptoms or vaginal dryness. And it's not okay to be taking a medicine that gets rid of your sex drive, unless you're suicidal for a short time. Uh, depression is real, but there are antidepressants that don't have those sexual side effects. So those would be my go-tos, unless the psychiatrist has a really good reason, because uh, well, sex life is part of who we are. So we'll be back shortly with another question for Ask Dr. Susan Live. Uh, go ahead and subscribe. 
Write some questions below if you have some things that you'd like to learn about. Uh, we always look at those questions and we'll add those to our future shows and share with your friends so we can get the word out. We'll talk to you next week. Thank you.